Hello, and welcome to Valor Vision News. I'm at City Chavez. And I'm Keyshawn Talley. Thanks so much for watching. The Supreme Court is considering whether President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness program is constitutional. Several conservative justices appear skeptical on his authority to cancel millions of dollars in federal loans. Reed Binion has a closer look at the deliberation by both sides of the bitch. Today is a great day to cancel student debt. High stakes at the high court as the Supreme Court hears arguments in two cases impacting millions of Americans. On Tuesday, justices considered whether President Biden's plan to erase student debt is constitutional. Some of the finest moments in the court's history were uh, pushing back against presidential assertions of emergency power. Conservative justices also pointing to the price tag of the loan forgiveness program, an estimated $400 billion over time, according to the Congressional Budget Office, and questioning whether the program is fair. But I think they argue that is missing is cost to other persons in terms of fairness, for example, people who've paid their loans, people who um, don't ha ha have plan their lives around not seeking loans um, and people who are not eligible for loans. Some liberal justices also weighing in on what may be fair. I'm um, wondering whether or not the same fairness issue would arise with respect to any federal benefit programs. One of the cases is a challenge from six GOP-led states wanting to block Biden's executive actions. The second involves two individual borrowers suing because they are not qualified for full debt relief. The Biden administration argued Congress gave it the power to forgive student loans because of financial hardships Americans face due to a national emergency, the COVID pandemic. An estimated 40 million people qualify for the program, which can forgive up to $20,000 per borrower. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Making their student loan repayment. The court is expected to rule on the student loan forgiveness program sometime this summer. In other national news, the White House and Congress are taking aim at the Chinese-owned social media app, TikTok. The app will soon be banned from all U.S. government-issued devices. Plus, the White House Foreign Affairs Committee is expected to vote on a bill that will make it easier to ban TikTok across the nation. Cole Higgins reports. The powerful House Foreign Affairs Committee holding a hearing on the threat from China to national security. We are living through one of the most dangerous periods in American foreign policy in a generation. The committee is also set to vote on a bill that would empower the Biden administration to impose a nationwide ban on the Chinese-owned social media app TikTok if the White House determines TikTok and its parent company, ByteDance, knowingly transferred TikTok's user data to any foreign person working for or under the influence of the Chinese government. Sanctions would be required if the Biden administration determines the companies helped the Chinese government engage in surveillance, hacking and censorship or intelligence gathering among other things. I don't have TikTok on my phone. I think there is strong evidence that TikTok is working with the CCP and sharing that data. TikTok says, quote, it would be unfortunate to censor millions of Americans and do so based not on actual intelligence, but on a basic misunderstanding of our corporate structure. Already, though, the White House telling federal agencies they have 30 days to remove TikTok from all government issued devices. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson saying, quote, I can't believe that the United States, as the world's number one superpower, is so afraid of a mobile phone application popular among young people. This shows a lack of confidence. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. More than half of all U.S. states has partially or fully banned TikTok on governor devices. That includes Alabama. Governor Kay Ivey issues an exec order in 2020 banning TikTok from state-owned devices and networks. As a public university, that ban applies to UM. TikTok cannot be accessed on the university's Wi-Fi Falconet. U.S. Representative Gary Palmer will be speaking at UM's later this week. Congressman Palmer will be talking about international management. This event is this Friday, March 3rd. It will take place in the Stevens Hall lobby at 9 a.m. Palmer represents Alabama's 6th Congressional District, which includes Montevallo. Pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly is cutting the prices of its instant product in a big way. Lilly CEO announced it was capping the out-of-pocket cost of the life savings drug at $35. As of May 1st, Lilly is also reducing the list price of 
is non-branded insulin to $25 a vial. Right now it's listed at $82 a vial. Insulin costs were capped at $35 for people on Medicare. But Eli Lilly's CEO, Dave Ricks, wants to make that cap to apply to anyone. We think that should be the new standard in America. And so while we uh, could wait for Congress to act or the healthcare system in general uh, to apply that standard, we're just applying it ourselves. Although insulin is relatively inexpensive to manufacturers, the cost has been rising for years. The American Diabetes Association says the average price of insulin normally tripled between 2020, 2002 and 2013. Remember, there's always more news 24-7 on our social media pages. Just search for Valivision News on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more stories throughout the week. We've also got more stories from our digital reporting team on our website, valavisionnews.wordpress.com. That's all the time we have for today's news update. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in to Valavision News again next week.